Hey everyone, today I'm replacing the headlights in my car. My name is Paul, and in this video series, I'm fixing up my 1997 Toyota RAV4 to make it as awesome as possible. The first RAV4s sold in the United States in 1996 and 1997 came with this style of headlight assembly. This headlight has a single dual filament light bulb that does both high beam and low beam, and the lens is glass, and the main characteristic you'll notice is it has vertical stripes going through the lens. A common upgrade people will do is installing the newer style headlight from the 1998 through 2000 model year. This lens is also glass, but it looks a little bit nicer because it doesn't have the vertical stripes through it. And fun fact, you'll never find yellow headlights in any first generation RAV4 because these lenses are all glass and not that stupid plastic. The biggest advantage to the newer style headlights is they use a separate low beam and high beam light bulb, which makes it easier to upgrade to LED. As an added bonus today, I'll be testing these LED headlight bulbs from Oxito. Let's start by checking out the old headlights. Each side has one light bulb that switches between low beam and high beam filaments. The headlights can be adjusted up and down with an eight millimeter wrench by turning this bolt. Let's do the garage door test to make sure the headlights are even with each other. That looks good. Out in the street, you can see the low beams have a very smooth beam pattern and the high beams shine a lot farther. The old lights have a three terminal connector. Let's start by removing the lower headlight trim piece. It just slides into place. Use a 10 millimeter socket to remove two bolts below the headlight assembly. Notice the bolts have these stepped shoulders that prevent them from crushing the plastic headlight tabs. Then just pull the headlights straight out. Let's take a closer look at the headlight. It has a level indicator on top, up and down adjustment on the back, and side to side adjustment too. This headlight has one light bulb. The left side is the same. Let's get that trim piece out. Remove all four headlight mounting bolts. Then pull the headlight out and unplug the three terminal connector. Someone fixed this headlight with some clear silicone. I still have broken glass rolling around inside. All right, let's take a closer look at these new headlights from the 1999 RAV4. Here you have separate low beams and high beams. And a bonus feature if you're at the auto parts store and you don't know which bulbs you need, it's HB4 for the low beam and HB3 for the high beam. Pretty cool. They're also labeled on the back the low beam is HB4, which is a 9006 bulb, and your high beam is HB3, which is a 9005. These headlights can also be adjusted up and down with an 8mm socket here, and it has a side-to-side -side adjustment here. The side-to-side -side adjustment has a rubber cap over the bolt, because unless the front of your car is bent, you will not need to make that adjustment. Let's take a close look at these light bulbs. HB4 is your low beam, and it's a 9006. If you take a look, that's a big hole in here, and the part with the O-ring is pretty big. And looking at the high beam, it's an HB3 or 9005. Notice the hole is smaller, and the round part with the seal is a little bit smaller as well. The connectors on the light bulbs are also different. Notice the 9006 low beam has one plastic ridge in the middle of the connector, and the high beam 9005 has two of them. That makes the connectors idiot proof. You can only plug the brown connector into the low beam, and you can only plug the black connector into the high beam. If you try to plug the connectors into the wrong light bulb, it won't let you do it. In this video, I will also be testing LED headlight bulbs from Oxito. They were nice enough to send me one set for free, and then I bought the other one. This is the 9006 low beam set. These LEDs look Pretty nice. This is a plug and play design. You should just be able to put it in and then plug it in. If you look closely at the connector, it is missing that ridge. So that means the connector is not idiot proof. You can plug either the high beam or the low beam connector into this bulb. Not a big deal. That's okay. Let's install the Oxito 9006 LED light bulb into my headlight assembly. That fits pretty nicely. Fairly tight. It does have a little bit of wobble. I'd say this does not fit as tightly as the Sylvania bulbs. Now let's take it out and try to put this in the wrong position. And that 9006 will not fit into the 
high beam hull. Great. I'm also testing the Oxito 9005 high beam light bulb. It pretty much looks exactly the same as the other one. It is also missing the tab in the connector, making the connector not idiot proof. Also not a big deal. And that fits in there nicely. It does have a bit of wiggle as well. It doesn't quite fit as tightly as the Sylvania bulbs. Now, this one is not completely idiot proof. This tab is a little shorter than on the original light bulbs. So you can actually put the high beam into the low beam hole, but it's pretty obvious that it doesn't go there. All right, so that's how that looks. It's actually plug and play. You can just plug your connectors directly into these bulbs. No extra modules needed. That's pretty nice. I'll be testing the original light bulbs first, and then we'll do the LEDs later so we can get a good comparison of how much they light up the street. So we're just gonna start out with these, and then I'll put the LEDs in later to see the difference. The next step will involve some rewiring, so I'll need some diagrams. I'm heading over to eManual Online. I'm buying the service manual for the 1999 Toyota RAV4. $27 gets you the factory service manual that they scanned in as a PDF. The download will be a zip file that you get to keep forever. It's not a subscription. Let's compare the 97 and 99 headlight wiring. The newer RAV4 has four light bulbs and the older RAV4 has two. The biggest difference is on the 1997, only one filament is on at a time. You can't have low beams and high beams on together because the light bulb would get too hot and burn up. On the 1999, the bulbs are separate, so the low beam and high beam can be on together. Both light bulbs get power from the headlight relay, and the ground side is connected by the headlight switch. On the 1999, the low beam is always on, so its ground wire goes directly to ground. Basically, we're just moving these headlights over from the newer car to the old one. Alright, let's do some wiring starting with the left side of the car. On the 1999 model year, the low beam negative cable is connected directly to ground. Since the low beam headlight is already grounded, we don't need the red wire with the green stripe. I'll just cap that off with some heat shrink. The high beam negative wire is red with a yellow stripe. It's the same on the old and new setup, so we can just match up the colors. The remaining wire in the car is red with a black stripe. This is the power wire from the headlight relay. Connect it to the other two wires. They're red with a black stripe and red with a green stripe. They don't quite match my diagram, but that's okay. Solder the wires and use heat shrink to make sure you have a perfect connection. Let's take another look at this wiring. The brown connector is for the low beam. It gets grounded directly to the body and gets its power from the headlight relay through the red with black stripe wire. That goes to both headlight bulbs. The high beam has a black connector. It gets its ground through the red wire with a yellow stripe and connects to the headlight dimmer switch inside the car. The red wire with a green stripe coming from the dimmer switch is for the low beam and does not get connected. On the right side of the car, the wiring is the same. Let's start by grounding the low beam headlight. The red wire with a green stripe is the low beam ground from the switch. We don't need this wire. Match up the red wire with a yellow stripe for the high beam negative going to the switch. The right side headlights get their power from the red wire with a blue stripe. Connect the other two headlight wires to this one. All right, let's double check the wiring for the right side headlight. The low beam has a brown connector and it's grounded directly to the body. The low beam negative wire from the switch is red with a green stripe and is not connected. The high beam negative wire is red with a yellow stripe. It's connected to the headlight dimmer switch in the car. The other two red wires are connected to the red and blue power wire. Now it's time to plug in the headlights and see if they work. We have low beams, then the high beams. It looks like everything works. Let's install the LEDs in here. Unplug both connectors, turn the bulbs counterclockwise, and pull them out. The new bulbs just plug right in exactly the same way as the old ones. I like cars where you can change the light bulbs without having to take a bunch of random BS apart first. I like the 6500K bright white color of the new LEDs. You can get halogen bulbs with a blue tint, but it's not the same as a pure white LED. Just for fun, I'm doing a current test to see how much power the lights use. The incandescent low beams use 8 amps. My multimeter only goes to 10 amps, so if I turn on the high beams, I'll blow up the fuse in my meter. 
The LED bulbs use 4.3 amps for the low beams, and I'm getting 6.7 amps total with low beams and high beams on at the same time. That's a lot less electricity than the old incandescent lights. Let's do the garage door test with the incandescent lamps. This test is perfect to make sure the lights are level with each other. It's even better if you adjust them out in the street to make sure the low beams don't shine into oncoming driver's eyes. Out in the street, the low beams provide a lot of light and the high beams add to it. I would say they project about 50% farther in front of the car. Back to the garage door test with the LEDs. They definitely look brighter and the beam patterns look the same as before. In the street, the LEDs look like they're twice as bright, but a lot of it could just be the bright white color. The high beams don't shine farther than before, but they appear brighter. Driving around, you can really appreciate the LEDs a bit more. I can see the road pretty well, but around turns, you're still pretty blind to the side of the car. That's just the lenses and the bulbs have nothing to do with it. I'm a little disappointed with the high beams. It looks like they only add about 200 feet of visibility. At 70 miles per hour, that's pretty much nothing. I was hoping they would shine a lot farther, but that is just how these RAV4 headlights are designed. Perhaps I can add some roof lights later. Let's compare the old and new headlights. In this picture, all the light bulbs are incandescent. The 1997 headlights cast a smoother beam closer to the car thanks to the vertical fluting in the lenses. Look at the lower right picture and you'll notice the clear lenses give you some triangle shapes in front of the car. The low beam and high beam patterns are about the same and the newer headlights don't shine farther down the road. Using high beams with the 1999 model year headlights, you get more total light because you have four light bulbs on instead of two. This picture is comparing incandescent bulbs and LEDs in the 1999 headlight assembly. The beam patterns look almost identical, but there is more light overall with the LEDs. The high beams don't shine farther down the road, but everything at the end of the beam is brighter with the LEDs. Personally, I prefer the look of the newer style headlights over the old ones, but I think this is more of an aesthetic upgrade rather than a performance upgrade since the beam pattern with the old style and the new style headlights is about the same. Now you do get a lot more light when you upgrade to LED headlights. If you have a 1996 or a 1997 RAV4, however, you can accomplish the same thing by simply buying the 3 prong 9003 LED upgrade kit. If you're interested in buying these same LEDs that I used from Oxito, follow the link in the video description below and enter the code LABCODEPAUL for 15% off. Let's take a look at the Oxito website. Enter your vehicle information. I have headlights from a 1999 RAV4 and I'm looking for the low beams. These 9006 LEDs are the ones I used in the video. Now let's look at the high beams. I also got these 9005 LEDs. Click checkout, then type in lab code Paul to get the discount. If you're just getting LEDs for your stock 1996 or 1997 headlights, select high beam and low beam. These 9003 LEDs look nice. Make sure to select the bulbs with three terminals. Now I know what you're thinking. What about the taillights? These taillights, <sighs> they're so ugly. In 1998, Toyota changed a lot of things about the RAV4, including the taillights. Now a lot of you guys out there are swapping these taillights for the newer style of taillight, but this is how you identify a 1996 or 1997 RAV4. This is the original RAV4, before the facelift, before they changed all this stuff, this is the OG. So this is, taillight gives this car its identity. I don't wanna change that, but it's so ugly though. So I'm gonna do something else. To remove the taillights from the RAV4, start by removing the metal filler panel under the light. Use a 10 millimeter socket to take out two bolts, then pull the light straight out. The top part will probably be a little stuck. Turn the light bulb sockets counterclockwise and remove all three light bulbs. The spare tire is blocking access to the right rear tail light. Let's get that out of the way. Open the back door. With the spare tire removed, I have room to use the screwdriver to get the filler panel out of the way. Get the bolts out, then pry the light a little bit if you have to, but be careful not to scratch the paint. Take the light bulb sockets out and the tail light is out of the car. I'm cleaning the lenses with isopropyl alcohol, and the next step is very stupid. Don't do this. 
I masked off everything except the lines between the different sections of the tail light, and I spray painted them black. I let the paint dry, and now let's peel the masking tape off to see what happened. Okay, if you look closely, the masking tape didn't seal properly and the paint leaked. My lines aren't sharp at all. It kind of looks like shit. I'm attempting to scrape the extra paint off with this plastic thing. I got it to look a little better, but if you're picky like me, this is still a failure. Let's put these lights back in the car. Install the bulbs, then push the light until it snaps into place. Put the bolts back in, and don't forget the metal cover. The left side is the same. The metal cover locks into a tab in the tail light, then is held in by a screw. Let's get that spare tire back on and the tail light nonsense is done. Or is it? I think the black outline looks great on the tail lights and from three feet away they look perfect. What I don't like about painting the tail lights is it's a ton of work and can end up looking bad even if you were extremely careful with the masking tape. There has to be a better way. I'm trying to undo my work here. Goo Gone plus the plastic scraper has almost no effect on the paint. I'm scraping this paint really hard and it's barely doing anything to it. I didn't want to do this, but I got the razor blade out. It will remove the paint, but it will also scratch the plastic lens. The flathead screwdriver also works because it's metal. This is not good. I'm trying to contain my scratches to only the painted area. By the way, if you want some paint that is nearly indestructible, this Raptor enamel from AutoZone is amazing. I finally managed to scrape it all off, so now I'm using McGuire's plastic polish to try to fix all the scratches I just added to my taillights. I ended up spending an hour polishing my taillights with the orbital buffer. The taillights look like new, and you can only see the scratches if you're looking very closely with a light. Let's clean the lenses with alcohol and try something else. I ordered some 3M pinstriping tape online, but that's not here yet, so just for fun, let's see what happens with this extra shitty $7 AutoZone tape. By the way, you must keep dust far away from pinstripe tape, for obvious reasons, and this package was full of it. Okay, let's peel the adhesive back and apply the tape to the lens. You must never touch the adhesive part with your fingers, because then it won't stick. Looks good so far, let's cut it and tuck the end in. Now comes the challenging part. In order for the pinstriping tape to work on a curve, it must be very sticky and very flexible. This cheap tape is neither. Push it down with one finger while keeping tension on the tape ahead of it. The gentle curve came out okay, but it didn't make it around the tighter turn below. Let's apply another piece of tape to finish the job. All right, it still didn't like that tight turn. I have several wrinkles and the cut is pretty obvious too. Trim the ends and tuck them in. This was much easier than the spray paint, and I have sharp edges, but I'm not happy with it. At least I can undo it in a few seconds without damaging my car. Now that we know what happens with fake pinstripe tape, let's check out the real thing. Go to a legitimate source to buy your pinstriping tape. Vinylstriping.com sells pre-cut pieces of tape, or they can custom make any width you want. I went with the standard vinyl in black. Let's clean the lens with alcohol again before we start. This quarter inch wide roll came in a plastic bag. Cut a short section so you don't have to juggle the whole roll. I cut the end at a slight angle to match the lines on the tail light. Peel the backing off with a razor blade and be careful not to touch the adhesive side with your fingers. Push the tape down with your finger to get it started and keep tension on the tape ahead of where you're going. Don't drag your fingers on the tape. Instead, just push on it to prevent your skin from scratching the black finish. Cut the end and tuck it in behind the black plastic. The part with the curve will be more difficult. When you get to the turn, apply pressure to the inside edge of the corner and bend the tape around with your other hand. Gently stretch the tape around the curve and move your holding finger a couple of millimeters at a time. If the tape gets creased too much, just pull it off and get a new piece. Notice I'm pushing on the tape, not dragging my fingers across it. Trim the ends and it's done. The tape is almost perfect. There are a couple tiny bubbles on the inside edge of the tightest turn. I'm using a heat gun and pushing the bubbles down with my finger. The heat will make the bubbles go away and it helps the adhesive stick to the plastic. The heat gun can also melt everything, so be very careful with it. My taillights have been through a lot, so I'm doing a little quick wax for protection to make everything shiny. 
Use a microfiber towel, but be careful not to grab the edges of the pinstripe tape and pull it off. These taillights look perfect. The edges are sharp, and the tape has no bubbles. You can only get this result with real 3M tape. One more thing. Let's see how much light we get. The incandescent lights are pretty dim. Backing out of the driveway, the light shines about 15 feet behind the car, but it's not very bright. I'm swapping the 1156 reverse light bulbs with LED bulbs from Oxito. They're $27 for the set. It's a bit pricey, but I'm into it. The installation is very easy. The LEDs light up my garage nicely. And backing up into the street, everything is much brighter than before. That's very helpful. Do you like the way the old taillights look with pinstriping? Or would you rather install the newer style headlights in your RAV4? Leave a comment below. And if you're new here, click on my channel, then playlists, and select the RAV4. You'll see that I have 30 videos about this car. Be sure to check those out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.